to you. Well, I mean, I don't know. Uh, good evening. We're sorry for the delay. We just I had one member that was missing, and we had to wait so we could get a quorum. We now have the quorum, so uh, the order of the meeting tonight is the approval of the minutes and decision and content review and vote on the Montrose Rally Auto Parts decision. And we'll adjourn after that. And, uh, I know the minutes are quite lengthy. Lisa does a fantastic job pulling the results. She does. Well, I got a couple of things I saw because I actually did read them before tonight. Oh, good. Uh, on page three, I'm sorry, page four, uh, I'd love to take credit about halfway down. It says perhaps the decisions that say roadworthy registered, not junked. For whatever it's worth, that wasn't me. That was Tom. I recognize it, and uh, it was a good point, but I didn't say it. Okay. Who um, said it? So you think I said it? Yeah. Oh. Well, Peter gave me some verbiage, which I used, you'll see, in the decision, which... And the other thing on page three, again, this is a comment I made. That's why I was able to pick it up. The concern about the huge difference between the cars, between hybrids versus 300 and fire chiefs, 276. Yeah. The, that isn't really, th those numbers aren't accurate. The difference was like almost twice as much. And that the chief estimated it was as more, as was referenced in a later page. Uh, let's see which page was it. Um, I mean, the chief thought. The chief thought ultimately that about 250 would be suitable. 250 would be suitable. Would actually be the maximum, was what he wrote in his, in his letter. Um, and yeah, my number that, was 350 plus, and that's where the, the discrepancy existed. Uh, in the interim, though, we did meet with the chief there and, and discuss the matter further and right. clarified so, it. So that, I, I don't think that really matters too much. You know, I, I think for the minutes, we could leave that as is. Okay. And, and the rest of it, I, I think, was okay. was okay. And if you want to give me credit for that other uh, yeah, statement, Yeah, for future reference, I would be happy to give you credit. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. Believe me. Anything that not, is not necessarily credit to me is fine. Okay, do we motion to accept them? Yeah, I'll move. I'll move that we accept the minutes from the August twenty-eighth meeting. Um, as prepared, as amended, or as prepared. prepared. Motion for made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now it's what's the status? Okay. Now we get to the decision.
want to go on record that uh, we agreed that Tom and I would meet with the fire chief and Mr. Bontos at the site uh, sometime before this meeting, and which we did last Monday. And uh, we found out that basically uh, the number of cars was the issue, the main issue, and that uh, the police chiefs was going by the hand sketch. Uh, that was the Police or fire? Hmm? Police. The fire, fire, uh, fire, 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 fire. Fire. Did I say police? No. Fire chief. Fire. Fire, fire. Yes. fire chief. Uh, the number of cars, uh, for what he saw and going by Mr. Bartos sketch, that was how he came up with the figure of 276 or 275, whichever the figure was. We discussed it and uh, we decided that uh, and the chief agreed that uh, the number of cars is not an issue. Is that correct? That's correct. He, um, he, he explained that he used a template a hand-drawn template by Mr. Bontos to simply come up with a rough calculation of what would be suitable as opposed to actually a, a clearly scale-driven model of what the space would hold. Um, so based upon what he observed without doing a hard count um, and a template that uh, was provided originally to all of us regarding this and that was further provided, um, <coughs> He came up with that number that was far more conservative, in fact, than our number was. And when we were there, we we did again a, a, a head count, essentially, of the cars that were there. Um, and there were again um, close to 300 cars in the predominantly rear section of the property, and the whole front section of the of the dog leg or arm as of the L. Uh, had almost no cars in it at this point in time. There were a 10 park car. You could easily have put on a similar parking um, structure, which is to say the way they were parked, well you remember, there were dual rows back right. in so they could remove them. With it, and the fire chief wanted 25 feet between rows for access of right. emergency. His main, main concern was that the cars not be parked along the fence. Right. Fencing area. Yeah, access for safety vehicles. Yeah, right. right. Access for safety vehicles. And, and they were. Uh, the, the cars be parked in, in roads with a roadway between them so that the fire trucks could get down through. Between them. And we kind of agreed that uh, about 25 feet would be. So, so that, that saying that, uh, Tom has drafted the decision and uh, I'm going to ask Tom to read it into the record. And if there's any questions, uh, now's the time to make any comments when, when we get to it. Okay. After we get through. Right. Thank you. All right, I, I will I will read the the decision in its entirety, uh, e even though essentially page one uh, merely has has no specific case material, but merely outlines the elements of of the application who's working on the case. So I'll I'll, I'll read through that uh, fairly quickly. Um, I will try to read it all quickly, um, and. But from pages two to the through six is where the the thrust of the case uh, is. Uh, this decision, uh, prospective decision of the Rowley Zoning Board of Appeals under the protective zoning bylaw, upon petition of Michael Bontos in an application dated 324 2015, asking to appeal a letter from the Rowley Building Inspector 
dated 2-24-15, citing a formal complaint requesting zoning enforcement of a prior board decision on the applicant's property located at 164 Boxford Road and to apply for a special permit on said property to allow the presence of a vehicle storage business. A hearing was held at the Rowley Town Hall Annex Center School on April 16, 2015. Members acting on this case are Donald W. Thurston, Chairman, Thomas W. Heidegger, Clerk, Robert H. Cool, Associate Member, David L. Levec, Member, and Philip A. Cressy, Member. Pursuant to a public notice originally in the Town Common, a newspaper in general circulation in the Town of Rowley, published on the 1st of April, 2015, and on the 8th of April, 2015, and by mail sent postage prepaid to all parties in interest, as defined in the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 11, and as such, list of parties was certified by the town assessors in accordance therewith, and to the town clerk, the planning board, the board of selectmen, and the building inspector, and by being posted in a conspicuous place in the Rowley Town Hall for not less than 14 days. The land is located in the outlying district and is shown on assessor's map 2, lots 9 and 10. The deed is recorded in the Essex Registry of Deeds, book 6106, page 110. The applicant is requesting a special permit under section 5.2.1 of the Rowley Zoning Bylaws, which states, quote, except as provided under section 5.2.2, the Board of Appeals may issue a special permit authorizing expansion of a non-conforming use or a change of a non-conforming use to another non-conforming use, but only if the Board determines that such expansion or change will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming use. Changes that constitute an expansion of a non-conforming use include, but are not limited to, an increase in building lot coverage or floor area, parking or loading capacity, or the hours of operation of such use. The request for the special permit emanates from and seeks release of a letter dated February 24, 2015, see attached, from the Rowley Building Inspector in which he issued a cease and desist order for a vehicle storage business which the applicant operates at the location and which the building inspector's letter indicates, among other stipulated factors, was not operating for a pe period of two years or more and therefore lost its grandfathered status. <clears throat> the chairman opened the public hearing in due form and determined there was no conflict of interest by him or any other member acting on this case. <clears throat> Preliminary case material. At the public hearing on the 16th at approximately 7.30 p.m., the chairman read the application into the public record. The board also received and accepted a certified abutters list. As a matter of record, the property previously had a board decision, 87.2, see attached, filed that granted a special permit subject to key conditions for, among other things, auto storage, service, and repair. However, as specified in that decision and as part of a condition imposed therein, 87.2, page 5, item L, the 87.2 decision effectively ceased to apply with the termination of the lessor lessee relationship between the applicant's company and the third party, which spanned the period between 1987 and 2007, and then ended. This condition nullified the presence of any of the other conditions imposed by that decision and therefore the property effectively reverted to the pre-87.2 decision zoning status as a licensed auto parts business in the town of Raleigh since 1979, which included or auto storage capabilities. There were numerous butters present, including the original complainant to the building inspector, John Beard of Boxford Road. His and their concerns included street safety due to increased vehicle traffic, vehicle speed, hours of operation, and potential impacts to groundwater supplies as a result of spills or fluid losses from any vehicles now understood to be stored on the property. Planning Board Chair Curtis Bryant, though not in a butter, asked to make specific note of Rowley Bylaw 521, 522, and Mass General Laws 310 CMR 22.21, uh, section paragraph 1 F to illustrate to the board that there is a real question as to whether the applicant should be allowed to expand or change a non-conforming use 
if it had technically lost its grandfather's status, and further, that the type of business he sought a special permit for, in fact, was disallowed in the said location for which he intended to operate the business. The applicant, Michael Bottas, owner of Raleigh Auto Parts, and his attorney, speaking on his behalf, attorney Peter Ross, were present at the hearing. Attorney Ross explained to the board that because Mr. Bontas' auto business never suspended operations, that he was one, asking to appeal the building inspector cease and desist order, and two, then obtain the proper special permit to cover his business as it now functions, if necessary. Mr. Ross submitted a plot plan and a site plan of the property with the application. Attorney Ross also presented the board with copies of licenses issued by the Board of Selectmen from 2007 to the present, as well as receipts showing transacted sales during the same period. He stated further that the current use, in fact, involved the storage of new vehicles owned by auto dealerships in the area who were leasing the space from Mr. Bontos pending future sales. He also said that cars are no longer being stripped, dismantled, and sold in parts, as had been the case in prior years during the inception of Mr. Bontos' company in 1979. The board concluded that this case involves several issues for further study and that a site visit would be appropriate to determine a clearer and current perspective on the level of auto storage implied by Mr. Ross. The hearing was continued to June 18, 2015 and subject to a site visit at a time to be determined later. <clears throat> Page 3. At the continued public hearing on June 18 at approximately 7.15 p.m., the chairman opened the case and read into the record letters concerning the application the board received from the Conservation Commission, the Board of Health, Fire Department, Planning Board, and the Board of Selectmen. Each pointed out issues which it believed had relevance to the application, and the board elected to deal with those that became pertinent as the case moved forward. The crux of this case was initiated by the letter previously referenced from the building inspector to the applicant, in which the building inspector questioned the principal legal business use of the property since it appeared that there had been no business use for a period of more than two years, the technical definition of abandonment in the Raleigh Zoning Bylaw, at a time period after which a business cannot be reestablished. He therefore issued a cease and desist order to the applicant indicating he could appeal such finding by petitioning the ZBA for an opinion or reversal of his finding and or to obtain a special permit for said use. Attorney Ross provided the board with information it requested to verify the existence of the company in the form of tax returns, which showed a New Hampshire address for the company. Yet all the BOS licenses were to rally auto parts doing business as name at the Boxford address. Attorney Ross stated that in conjunction with the tax returns and receipts, the licenses clearly indicated that business was done in Raleigh from 2007 to the present, so there was no abandonment issue. However, the chairman noted that while there is evidence that there was some work being done on the site relevant to the purported grandfather use, the board appeared to be being asked to expand a current non-conforming use and further that its location in a water protection district would prohibit the board from approving a permit under those conditions as it would be a violation of Mass General Laws 310 governing wellhead protection. In an effort to verify the representations by Attorney Ross regarding the site layout, the board conducted a site visit on Monday, May 4, 2015 at 1 p.m. and confirmed the presence of perhaps 200 cars, essentially all new and parked neatly in rows. It was clear that this amount of vehicles was far less than the site could support. Perimeter boundaries were noted and access and exit locations viewed, as well as specific proximity to wetland and related vegetation. The board continued to debate and discuss the issues surrounding abandonment and whether or not it was faced with a discontinued non-conforming use or, as Attorney Ross was proposing, that the use as defined was vehicle storage and that it in fact was a valid subset of the original grandfather use. The board felt it needed further time to review material presented by Attorney Ross to further investigate the status of the presence of the non-conforming use and to assess if the proposed use was in fact an expansion of the non-conforming use. Based on these factors, the board decided to continue the hearing to August 20th, 2015, to which the applicant agreed before considering a final vote on the application. At the continued he public hearing on August 20th, 
2015 at approximately 7.15 p.m., Attorney Ross presented the board with a list of abutters who had been approached by the applicant and signed the letter indicating their approval of the applicant's business, which were later verified. The board also received a follow-up letter from the fire department dated August 4, 2015, in which it stated that it had met the applicant and had resolved all of its concerns regarding spill containment and access to and egress from the site. Page 4. Regarding the abandonment and expansion issues at the center of this application, the board reviewed a memo dated 103086 from attorney James Cresser, see attached, on behalf of the original client noted in the applicant's special permit case number 87-2. That memo presented clear case law which stated in effect that a use at whatever condition of existence of said use was still the same use and a change in the same use expansion was not an expansion of the use per se. With this clarification, the board was able to conclude that even though the precise relationship Rowley Auto Parts was granted an 87.2 decision relating to its lesser lessee status with underwriters salvage company had lapsed, its prior grandfathered use of vehicle storage was still intact as it had always had the right to store vehicles on the site. Further, the result of prior submitted evidence, the board determined that since Rowley Auto Parts operated on the site during the period since the lapse termination of that prior decision, despite a substantially diminished business capacity, it nevertheless could not be considered as abandoned and therefore the prior use or uses continued to the present. The only aspect of the termination of the 87.2 special permit was that was material is that all the conditions stated therein also ceased to be present as they only related to the operation of the special permit while the relationship with underwriter salvage company was in full force and effect. In continuing its review of case material, the board examined several subjects alerted to it by the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission. The Planning Board was concerned that the right to sell cars was being considered, which it was not. Secondly, there was a concern that no, use, no new use in a water protection district associated with new development activity could be granted under state law. However, the definition of new development activity related purely to the creation of new structures, also not a relevant component of this special permit request. Lastly, there was a concern that the special permit might authorize the existence of a junk storage yard a prohibited use in terms of the town master plan. While the town master plan is an excellent document, collect, document collection of guidelines and parameters concerning future development patterns for the town, as it was never formally adopted by town meeting, it does not regulate or otherwise confine the town or its boards to operating under its recommendations. Since the proposed use does not call for or request the ability to store junk or inoperable vehicles, the board found this concern did not apply. Issues which have been highlighted by the Conservation Commission concern care of the site in the event of hazardous waste spillage and are being addressed in the conditions of this decision. In effect, the applicant is requesting the ability to continue an existing use, vehicle storage, originally granted as part of its original pre-87.2 decision licensing by the town and therefore a non-conforming grandfathered use and is asking that said use be confined to the leasing of space to mass licensed resellers of new and used registrable automobiles who desire to store unsold cars on the site. Since the board's site visit confirmed the presence of virtually all new cars, at least 90% of those viewed, the board believes that the proposed use is in fact less detrimental to the site than previous uses formerly allowed. The fire department also made a recommendation that the site be restricted to no more than 250 vehicles at any one time. Board member Heidegger had visited the site on the date of this hearing and found that there were as many as 350 vehicles and that there was ample space for at least 150 more based on his own calculations. Given the differential in number, the board sought clarification on the assumptions the fire department used in their calculations and requested a meeting with Chief Broderick at the site and concluded that the decision would incorporate a final resolution concerning vehicle levels if necessary. Page 5. 
With reference to the original complaint, the board noted that it did not have, nor was presented with any hard evidence, that there were vehicles speeding in the area associated with this business, that there were negative impacts on the neighborhood as a result of the presence of the business, or that there had been any impact to date on any wetlands. In the case of any speeding, the applicant agreed to place signage inside the property showing the 25 mile per hour limit outside of the property. The board, after requesting any other hearing testimony from either abutters or interested parties and hearing none, and after completing a review of all of the pertinent data was completed, determined that there was sufficient grounds to, one, uphold the request for an appeal of the building inspector's letter of 224.15, removing the cease and desist order, and two, grant a special permit allowing the presence of a vehicle storage business under section 5.2 and authorize the ZBA clerk by unanimous vote to draft a decision of approval to be reviewed and signed during the September 17th monthly meeting. Board findings. The board, after concluding a thorough review of the application, filed as an action of an appeal of a building inspector's cease and desist order in a letter dated February 24, 2015, and further, to request a special permit to authorize the continuance of an existing non-conforming business doing business as Riley Auto Parts to operate a vehicle storage business with special consideration given to the use and nature of the property considering the applicant owner's desire to remain in full compliance with any relevant town codes or bylaws, does hereby find there to be sufficient grounds to grant said appeal and special permit and finds the application for the permit to create a condition that is, quote, not any more detrimental to the neighborhood and therefore agreed to issue a special permit as requested at the site noted on site plans provided as part of the original application and shown in the attached plot plan dated July 17, 2008, and prepared by Apple Associates, Inc., Byfield, Mass. Therefore, the Board votes to approve a special permit as requested under Section 5.2 to be granted subject to the following conditions. One, the owner will not store or allow to be stored any vehicles which are not verifiably registrable, have junk or salvage titles, or are otherwise, or are otherwise be inoperable. Two, the vehicle stored can only be moved on and off the property during normal business hours, seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Three, the nine-acre site is depicted in the attached site plan shall be fenced and include a lock gate and will be the only area in which cars can be stored. There will be no employees working on vehicles on the site in connection with repairs to or alterations of stored vehicles. Four. The existing trees and vegetation constituting a visual barrier will be left intact. Five, the fire department will be provided with keys to any locks used to secure the property gate or in the future event of a knock security box with access to it in a manner prescribed by the fire chief. Six, at a maximum, cars can be parked in double rows with at least a 25-foot separation between each set of double rows in order to allow access for emergency vehicles with total vehicle density determined by allowable conditions under this guideline. Seven, there will be no signage on Boxford Road other than on the property gate advertising this or any other business and such signage will conform to standard rally sign bylaws. Eight, Mr. Bontos doing business as Rally Auto Parts will not be engaged in auto sales or auto repair business or any other business other than one which enables vehicles to be stored on the property for any other purpose than resale. Nine, the applicant will maintain at least two spill containment systems on site at all times as outlined by the fire department in its letter to the ZBA of 8-4-2015. These will include absorbent pads, speedy dry, and booms. A written policy noting the fire department's phone number as well as directions for use in the event of need. 10. The applicant shall employ a regular mowing program to enable easy and regular access to all parts of the fenced area where parking may occur and to include cutting along the fence line to diminish the chances of fire either in or from outside the yard. 11. The applicant will comply with any groundwater regulations which may apply as defined by the Rowley Conservation Commission. 12. The special permit granted herein is not assignable. 13. The board requires the applicant files a copy of said decision with the Registry of Deeds and provides a receipt from the Registry confirming 
such no later than 30 days from the end of the appeal period. Failure to do so will result in a request from the ZBA to the building inspector to issue a cease and desist order until such time that the ZBA board receives the registry receipt requested. 14. The applicant understands he is not entitled to any expansion or change of any provision of this decision without the prior written approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals in the form of an amendment to this decision and any such action or actions will be considered a violation which will result in the issues of a cease and desist order by the building inspector. Voted this 17th day of September 2015. A lot of information in there. Very good point. Could I make a request? As That's long as I don't have to rewrite it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've, you've done a lot of good work, and I don't, I, I don't want to minimize that. Well, we're open to comments, so. Uh, on the board's finding in paragraph one. Um, what page? Uh, page five. My client does have an existing, though very small, uh, business known as Raleigh Auto Parts. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that one puts that out of business. I'm assuming you mean we're not leasing space to store junk cars or non vegetable cars, but that he on occasion can bring some parts in and sell them, which he's been doing all along. I, I don't know if I've got that right. Uh, uh, Peter Rith. Okay. Speak specifically to the point you're talking about, I mentioned. Okay. The owner will not store or allow to be stored any vehicles which are not regi verifiably registrable, have junk or salvage titles, or otherwise be inoperable. Yeah. That inconsistent with some of the things he's been doing lately. He's been bringing junk cars on. I think they were when we were there on Monday. But I saw used auto parts on. I saw the parts that's inside my building. I, I, The way this is written, as I read it, and, I, and I'm open to review on this, is that this, this comment only refers to a whole vehicle. So what the board is concerned about is that we don't end up with any sort of a junkyard status. Now when we were there um, on our second visit, not our most recent visit, um, I did see some vehicles that I believe were inoperable. There's two vehicles. Um, I think one was a trailer, maybe? Uh, a camper. A camper. Yeah. Okay. That, I'm not sure I consider that a vehicle under the conditions that we're looking at vehicles, number one. Okay. Number two, um, when we inspected the building, uh, all we saw was fewer parts than you and I could fit in our garage. Uh, you know. This is meant, you know, we don't anticipate that you're going to be pulling in a junk vehicle, stripping it, and, you know, letting it sit there, no. and have, and taking the few resaleable parts, which you would want to protect, and put them inside. Yeah. If, if you're going to do that, you got to do it somewhere else. Because we really, we just, you know, or do it inside. Inside the building. Inside the building. Oh, that's fine. I, I, if you I, put I, it inside the building, it can I just don't want five junk cars that are leaking because they're inoperable, not functioning vehicles. That's what we're trying to get away from. Agreed? I think we agree. I just don't want to run into a problem, say, five years from now, and be just trying to figure out what this means. Are you? In other words, you want the car, if, if I bring a car in here, I mean, I have parts in it that I sell, that I have to like, I will swap to buy parts, customers like that. If I want to bring a car at one time, I put it in my building. To take whatever parts I want and keep inside the building. If if you if you're doing it inside the building, yes. as far as I'm concerned, I mean, uh, okay. you know, I don't I don't think I, there's I, an I, issue I, with that. I, I, I have a question. Okay. You you bring in a car that has been in an accident and you strip it. Right. What do you do with the vehicle? When you're through stripping, it goes to it goes to the uh, yeah. The, you know, I don't keep it on. I don't keep it on site. You, you had it uh, when we were up there. Remove before, you yeah. had a great big dumpster up there full of what junk cars. A dumpster, right? No, I was just cleaning up the yard. That's all I was doing. Oh, okay. uh, matter of fact, 
for instance, that camper, okay? Mm -hmm. When you sell for scrap metal, they don't buy wood. Right. So I was taking the wood off the thing, and the aluminum on the side, that's the metal you sell. And I put the stuff in the dumpster. Okay. That was after that. There was no hazardous waste or anything like that. Okay. No, no, I was just, I was just wondering, there are certain parts that you can take off the car that, that you can resell. Yes. Okay. But there are other parts that you can't resell. Exactly. The car will be, once I, once I get rid of, once I do that, then I'll get rid of the car. Okay. You don't keep the car on site. No. no. I mean, I still got to finish that. Yeah. can't put it like that. But if I bring a car in, because that's what I need the class three license for, that I have since 1974. That. So whatever use parts I have inside the building, I want to be able to sell those buildings or whatever I store inside the building. Right. And the cars won't, I don't know, on, on the hot top right there, that's, you know, I'm not going to spend the cars there. I just want to be able to keep my class with license. I mean, you know. Well, yeah, your other licenses in full force in fact, we're not impacting that. Okay, I just, well, that's all I just wanted to make sure about that. Yeah, well, the only thing the only thing I could see, you know, is that the owner will not, we amend this wording to say the owner will not allow, will not store or allow to be stored any vehicles uh, outside. outside of the building, which are not verifiable register of junk. I, I mean, we just, I, we, I just don't want to get into a case I where understand. you're saying no one's paying attention and I happen to have three that came in and I'm... You know, and I can do this and this, and they're sitting there. I mean, I, you know, that that's 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 the. T I mean, we're we're comfortable with the storage of the new vehicle, but if there's going to be anything else about parts, because everything you everything you purported to us about parts, including the information you suggested represented income on your tax returns, is that it's almost infinitesimal. So I, I don't know why being confined to the building wouldn't be sufficient because it doesn't seem like you have five vehicles there yeah. very often. Is that all right? Yeah. Is that, is that acceptable? Yeah. Okay. All right. So how does that affect the camper that's been there for six months? I have to finish taking the wood out, but then I'll take it off the front. Okay. Okay. But that's that vehicle. But then under this decision, that couldn't recur. You couldn't have because that camper is outside. Yeah. So you wouldn't do that again? No, if it, once, yeah, once it, if I brought a car inside the building and it would leave it inside the building so I'm ready to get rid Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. So right. 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 That's what my class two license is. Yeah, no, no, I, I, as long as we all understand that. Is that okay? Yeah. Is it all right with you? Yeah. Okay. That's that hyper technical point is the only one. Okay, do, we, do we want to, to address your point? Do we want to make one more additional amendment to this statement to say, instead of saying any vehicles, do we want to restrict it to motorized vehicles? Any vehicles, as you say, covers anything that moves on wheels, technically, which means trailers. If we put, if, 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 we, if we say motorized vehicles, we're then I mean, th there's nothing that's dripping or going to come out of a camper or a trailer, yeah. you know, like I have by well, the well, side of my house. Do we want to restrict it, or what do you think? Well, I think on the back of the, on the, back of the class three license, it says motor, motor vehicles. If I don't have a car right there, it doesn't have class three license. It's, it's, it's motor vehicles. It's motor vehicles. Yeah. Is that a problem? Yeah, I think motor vehicles is proper. Okay. Is a problem? No, no. I think no. Oh, okay. The thinking of change, if I understand this right, you say motor vehicles. So if okay. you get three bicycles out there for some reason, oh, yeah. nobody cares because they're not going to contaminate the well water or right. the ground right. or anything. Right. I mean, or a trailer. But yeah. what their concern is, and I think we are in agreement, you can't have you know some jump car up there leaking antifreeze. No, you know, motor oil and a bunch of other stuff. It's only going to hurt you. Motor? Any motor vehicles. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, it's your floor. You're okay? 
that's all I wanted to say. I just was that technical. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got to do it inside. Yeah, I understand. That's all. Is that okay? Inside the building. Yeah. And then the number five that like we would talk to the police chief, I would be coming to the fire chief that I would give the loose keys to the game. Yeah, I, uh, I, I've, I've left it to you, you and he yeah, seem okay, to have an okay, agreement. Okay, okay. Uh, it's well, that's I mean, it's we're, up to you. We're there, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. As long as he's satisfied. You're yeah. Okay. Agree to that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. Do you it's want to make as a condition in your discussion, right at the end of the discussion, uh, next to the last paragraph, you talked about the signage, 25 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should make that, bring that down into the uh, conditions. It's not. It's referenced, but then it's not made a condition. Um, I don't think it is. Unless no, unless I, you know, I, I, don't, I think you're right. Uh, that sign, I, I said I would put one there. The sign would be inside the property. Is he, is in, yeah, it's inside the property. What they're saying is... I understand. Okay. They just want to make sure it's a condition. It's a so if you violate it, they can bring you in and say, yeah. we're not having any discussion. This is a condition, perhaps. Uh, you know, it's 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 it's, it's, it's it's inside. It's not for public consumption. It's only for those that are driving inside to exactly. see. It's like you and me putting, you know, a, a dog crossing on our property to get people to slow down. I mean, uh, you know, uh, people may or may not respond to it. It's not if if he if we were asking him to put signage exterior to the property, I think I'd be more inclined to agree with you, frankly. I don't have a problem with making a condition because I know he, he indicated it, it's it's candidly it's 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 a carryover from the eighty seven decision. I mean the statement says he's agreed to it, so yeah. I'll put a sign in the state in the, inside the property. So you know, they're coming back out, speed limit twenty five miles an hour. You know, like respect the neighborhood and the children. When I mean, you see the signs on the street anyways like that. But I want it inside my property. Yeah, no, no, you know, no. Right. I mean, someone, if I put it outside, someone will take it down. Well, I don't want to, you know, there are so many issues with I signage know. in town. I know. I, you know, it's the, I don't want to go there. Can I put private property sign on my gate? I don't see why you can. Okay. I don't think this decision can affect that. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I just want to, I just want to, you know, because a long time ago, we don't do like this. I went to the neighbors beforehand. I put signs out there. Private property, no hunting and all that stuff. Yeah, well, that's. And I went to the neighbors. I said, "Listen, I'm going to put them on my side, my, my property, over my trees." I put ten of them there. Yeah. Within a week, they got them done, all of them. But I know that's not. But I just wanted to sign. I don't. I just want to put a sign in private property, no trespassing. The, they were no listed. hunting signs. Huh? Were they no hunting signs that got ripped down? Oh, I put pri private property. I put everything up there, but the, not not to do there. You know, yeah. just to protect myself. Yeah. But I mean, that's. I'm just saying. You know. If I put them there, but I mean, I just want to put one on the fence. Private property, no trespassing, please take notice. I, I, I have private property on my driveway because I sit 200 yards back and people go down and think it's a road. Okay. So you can't go away. <laughs> um, you got anything else? Okay, so the only change that we made is uh, motor vehicles outside. Page five one. Any motor vehicles outside? How is that going to? How is that going to affect the last page? Shouldn't affect it at all. It's two words, no. It won't bounce it. No. She's got room here. Okay. Uh, if you want to make that 
can we, should we, yeah, we can sign. She, what we're gonna do is we'll sign and then she's gonna make the uh, correction to it. Later, yeah. Okay. I understand. Okay. <laughs> she'll send you, she'll. Okay, so uh, you've heard the decision, we have read it, we discussed it. Uh, I'll put it through a Okay. Roll call for Aye. 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 Okay. You, so your working copies are sufficient now until she files it next week. Is that yes. right? Is That's that fine. Right? That's perfect. No problem. Okay. The, the only thing that I would suggest that you do is that once you have a we, you know, we've got a copy that's there that you let your lessees uh, oh, have a copy. What, have a copy. What, what we came up with. Just so they know that this exactly. is what you are you're forced to work under now. Just, just just to keep them in the yeah. inform informative loop. Yeah, absolutely. You know. should really thank Mr. Cool because the only reason this is happening tonight is because I he's know. here. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> but I should have been here, so I mean, it's not. Yeah, but you are. You weren't and you are, so that's that's good. Okay. okay. Um, now, what, what, what will happen now is that uh, Lisa will put this together on Monday. Once you get it, you could just email it to her. Yes, we'll do it. That's fine. We'll do it. That's fine. No problem. Uh, uh, is there any other business? Uh, I don't have any other business. Not tonight. Not tonight. Make a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, the motion's been made to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much.